sound design, scored a few movies. That had to be on YouTube. Uh, yeah, we have two studios. Yeah, we have one, and one up there, which is uh, off at the moment. Um, we run fully analog equipment with a big tape machine over there. We, in the process of uh, starting an academy as well, which is going to help empower a lot of people. Yeah, thank you. Empower a lot of people to to get out of the. Uh, and Ian, tell us a bit about yourself and what you do at Blue Africa. Uh, my name is Ian Abraham. I am the CEO for a platform called Blow. So it, it's focused primarily on Africa. So the whole idea is if you, there's two sides of music. So there's the side of music from the consumer's point of view, which is what we perceive as listeners. So we listen to music, we look at an artist's lifestyle, and we assume just because an artist had a big hit out, they are making a lot of money out of it. But the reality is on the ground, the other side is completely different. So usually an artist will record their music, put it on YouTube, hoping it would blow up. See what I did? Hoping it would blow up and then, <laughs> And then the whole idea is you're not making money from streaming. Because if you look at the streaming revenue for, for you to get a thousand dollars, you need 1.5 million views. So now if you look at a lot of African artists, they wouldn't hit 1.5 million views easily. And your bookings, your merchandise, your performances, for those to get any revenue, you need your song to blow up. So then a lot of artists heavily depend on being booked for performances, for shows and so on, which most of the time are not things they would necessarily want to do. So for example, going to perform at a club where people are drunk, you want people to appreciate your music, you want people to listen to your music. And so you would want your music to be performed how you intended it to when you are recording the music. So at Blue, we take a completely different approach and the whole idea is to basically increase how much money an artist is able to make directly from the music and not indirectly. So we thought of something like cinema for movies, how cinema works for movies, we do the same thing for music. So instead of trying to sell someone music, which a lot of Africans would not do, the artist sells their loyal fan base an exclusive experience. So think of an artist like Nyashinsky. So he has a huge loyal following across the country. If he was to do a concert in a remote place like Turkana, for example, you'd still get a lot of people going to the concert. So how does he capitalize on that loyal fan base? So say he's, he's about to drop a single or an album. He could drop the album exclusively on Blue. On top of the album, he could add the behind the, the scenes the story behind the album, basically everything you'd want to know about an album that isn't usually public. And then he will drop exclusive merchandise around the album. And the only way to access the merchandise is by paying for the exclusive. So you change the whole conversation from me buying music to me paying for an exclusive experience of my favorite artist. So even, so let's say Nyashinsky drops the album exclusively on Blow for say a month. So for the month, he could charge $10 for everyone who wants to access everything related to the album. And by that, he doesn't need 10 million people to pay for the exclusive. He just needs 10,000 or 100,000 people to pay for it. And he'd have made way more money than he would make traditionally from his music across every front for one to five years. So that's how you change how an artist makes money. And then and the other thing is you increase how quick you feel position. So okay. I get one club. He basically turns a regular artist into a superstar. So think of an artist back in Turkana. 
for people in Nairobi who didn't necessarily come. But he could be a sister and Sultana being able to live off of his revenue because he is his so you don't need to blow up and become one of the biggest superstars across Africa. Of blow. So you guys are like giving meaning to the word blow. I love it. That is exactly what you're doing. Um, and I really love how you're particularly removing the barriers to entry. Something that is visible for all from both of the history, yeah? Um, I'd like yeah. to hear from you, Molly. How do you feel like podcasting uh, is, has enabled equality for all, yeah? Um, and removing the same barriers to entry for guys who would like to get into um, the space? I'm sorry, that first bit was cut off. You said, how do you think podcasting is blank for all? Being accessible, is that what you mean? that everybody now is big and getting into podcasting, how do you feel like technology has played that role? Sure. I mean, I love that you asked it that way because one, of, I think there are two things that are fundamentally important as you're building an ecosystem that's digital. And the first one is breaking down barriers to entry coming from contribution. And when it comes down to breaking barriers to entry, I think what's really amazing about podcasting is that if you have a voice, you can have a podcast. And we see this incredibly fast digital growing continent in Africa receiving um, all of this incredible technology in terms of platforms and ability to be creative. And I, I love what you said earlier about like getting into your dreams, right? Like that orange economy, that creator economy, when it comes to podcasting, you really just need a phone. And some of the biggest podcasts in Kenya started with just a phone. Obviously, there are incredible studios all around the continent. Um, I'm not sure if most of the listeners are here in Kenya, so I, I could name a few in Kenya if that's helpful. But there are resources where you have producers. There are resources where you have microphones and studios and equipment and people to teach you. But also, you can start from the basic I'm so sorry in my house. I know we're all in Nairobi, so when you saw that, you understood what's going on with me over here. But um, sorry. So technology has impacted it with the ability to have better stats, the ability to monetize and make money from your content, um, having more pass-throughs on different platforms like Spotify, Apple, Google, etc. And then additionally, connecting your RSS feed to more... Um, places where your potential listeners are. And the production helps you ultimately have better quality control, the experience, and better sound. Sorry about that earlier with the rain, but I might have to get those. Um, Alex, I think then so end, so please. Um, that's, uh, that's amazing to hear that even in terms of distribution, something that we don't think about, we literally that all for you, it's insane. Um, and just from the button on your phone and conversation there you are reaching masses yeah and sharing your story um that technology is doing for that um for you sean i'd like to find out what challenges are music producers going through now um and audio engineers the same sound engineers yeah. what thing that um inhibits you from doing the best of your work so your question is what what challenges do we face with the with the new front of technology? Uh, music. With music, music production. Okay. Well, um, it's a good question because you know uh, there is with 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 um with an action there is an equal and opposite reaction. You know, um, and I feel that as much as music has given music technology and the technology um, revolution has given a lot of other people and producers the chance to make music for example you know nowadays you're going to find a lot of night especially nigerian artists world-class artists recording in their hotel room you know um and collaborating with other people just in a simple room whereas before you need a huge studio you know um but with that said it's also kind of there's two things here right and the first one i say might be a bit controversial but hey <laughs> we like that um I feel I feel technology has has sort of 
left a big hole in, in, in the soul of music, right? Um, and the reason I say this is because music now is mass produced, right? Um, and before when you would make music, it used to, back, I'm talking about before there was computers, you know, you used to have a whole team behind you, you used to have a tape up, you used to have a band, you used to have your engineer, your producer, and all of these guys were working simultaneously, you used to be able, there was a band recording, record at once, you know, everyone was rehearsed, so if anyone made a mistake, you have to start again, you know, it was a whole thing, and, and, and now, and you only had something like 16 channels to work with, so you have to take all your instruments and try and fit them in 16 channels whereas nowadays or 32 channels or however there was not a lot but nowadays in a computer you can have up to a thousand channels depending on the processing unit um, that you have so that's the first thing um, the second thing is is the which is up and coming it is not yet here but I, I do see this being both sides again is AI for me is a tool of music. The other day, where if you take a track, any track you like, and you put it on, your, on, on this AI website, it'll actually separate the vocals, the drums, the bass, and everything for you, right? With the click of a button. Um, and that's a great thing. Like, let's say you want to make a remix of a Kanye West track, you just want his vocals, you know? Um, and that's a great thing. But also, so AI is, is, is in a place where um, I hope it does not dictate the, the, the amount or the, or the time of music, the time it takes to create a track. You know, AI, if you type in a parameter nowadays, especially like with digital um, art, you can type in a parameter and it creates your art for you, you know. So I hope that it doesn't reach a place where, you know, the, the need for for a producer, the need for a, you can even master your tracks now online. Can you imagine that? Yeah, you can just send your master in and then it, it does it for you. So that's, that, that's, that's one thing I'm seeing, but you know, the, the flip side, is it, it's you to decide how it affects you. Are you gonna evolve past it? Right? Are you gonna do things which AI cannot do? And that's gonna force you out of your comfort zone or are you just gonna let it overtake you? Um, so, mm. That 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 was that was. And there's one more thing I think also, which is which is a a bit of a tricky situation for producers. So there's there's, there's some websites called Splice, or there's some other websites where you can just download samples of a shaker. You can just like type in shaker, and it gives you a shaker loop or whatever. But <clears throat> now on social media, right? Um, they have again some technology where they can sense these samples, right? So Unless everything is made originally by you in the studio, it's going to sense this sample as not being original, mm -hmm. which then you can't monetize your track. So your track will not be allowed on Instagram. Uh, as you know, when you, when you add to a story, let's say you type in whatever and you add music to your story, it won't show up there because of something like, let's say, a shaker that you used on a, downloaded from a sample site. So it is forcing people to create their own samples. However, not everyone can play a shaker. Not everyone can, you know, um, play a keyboard. Not everyone can sample these things. So, um, yeah, those are the things that I'm seeing. But as well as I've said, it's a, it's a, it's a double-sided thing, you know. So, so yeah. 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 Very exactly. important. Said, um, there's a, a risk of, of compromising media mm. and for, um, or production of music. And for you, Ian, I'm curious to find out um, challenges you feel music and musicians have and um, getting the it depends on the caliber of artists. So when you get artists, caliber have the very successful ones, and often those ones have the knowledge and the resources to go get a copyright, to go get a trademark for their music. Because at the end of the day, you need to register it, and to register it, you need to pay for it. 
And for you to even know to register a trademark, you need to have the knowledge. A lot of coming artists on the ground up as how do I do a music the whole aspect realize the whole thing of copyright the whole in state and released it before they did so then you start to get into those issues but then i'd say the bit to your content your copyright and trademark is not as much if you currently right now if you google the internet penetration in kenya you'd get a high figure so some, some to learn how they calculate it's quite fascinating because it's very inactive the marketplace and in that marketplace they have one cyber cafe usually they would assume anyone around that area who has access to that cyber cafe has access to the internet which is incorrect because they do not use the internet day in day out so the actual internet penetration in kenya would be less than 30 percent so out of this 30 percent or less most uh, kenyans who <coughs> especially not doing well also like uh, the middle income earning or the high income earning those below that uh, wealth gap i would say they would most not people who pen or go find useful articles so in as much as a lot of people would have smartphones it's very difficult for them to like think of going to look for copyright especially if you've never heard of copyright in your life so then i would say that biggest challenge to copyright and owning your music is information so knowing this and if you're going to uh, to perform at a concert for example then it becomes very difficult for for you to open and get paid you because no information is a lot of artists get get booked for a show and then the promise is after they perform they get paid but then you don't get paid and you can't take them anywhere because you need to know for you to sue someone then you need to be able to afford to sue them in the first place because there's a financial implication to it. So it's usually the lack of information that's the biggest right? So of actually getting the copyright is it's a bit complex, especially with trademark. So with copyright is relatively easier, but with trademark it, it gets more complicated. So those are the different factors. Sorry to interject. There's this uh there's this um thing uh, case in Kuwait. it's actually the most one of the most famous um cases in music was the pharrell bloodlines and uh so was it stevie wonder i think um now if you actually look at what happened he was actually in the in in the context of what happened he was sued not from the not from the, the um information that was copied from stevie wonder but based on a fee right the stevie wonder won the case based on a feeling now that's the scary thing right it was not based on copying a melody based on copying rhythm based on it was based on a feeling right so there also there is also now a, a kind of gray line that is being drawn upon copyright um and that for me that for me is 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 a bit of a is a bit of an eye opener you know um yeah <laughs> I think one that it's never black and white, really, yeah? yeah. And that's why as knowledge, an insane amount of knowledge to be viewed out for everyone to have so that they can know that they're getting where we're not. 
Yeah. I'm so sorry. Is it just breaking up yeah. on my side? Yeah. Or? It's breaking up. It's breaking up on, on your end. Oh, for, oh. Is it breaking up for everyone or just me? Yeah, just all of us. Oh, no. Okay, sorry. Right, can you repeat that again? I didn't hear that. And uh, there's also a question for Supersonic, so you should probably read it as Where she asked. Yeah. Hope my connection. Yeah, I'll keep checking it. Um, but as I was saying, that's a good comment. question. Yeah. Um, I think we have more questions happening, so we'll have um a section for Q and A, guys. Please stream in your questions on the comment section. And you'll get right. To um, Molly, I wanted to get insights from you about the time um that you experienced in. Um, in the same way that an advantage you're breaking up that we've no, the rain is not on our side between yeah. the rain fly let me know if you fell much Sorry. better yeah We're, it's much better now i think the rain is affecting everything so try one more time were you asking about the challenges Yes, so the challenges of uh, we've experienced uh, in podcasting and we've seen uh, technology has brought about, yeah? As much as there are so many people who have this accessibility, is there a risk? Well, I think it's for almost any platform, especially a digital platform in this current age of technology. So I think if you, you're talking about challenges, from a I think we have a bit of education to do and ultimately teaching because, you know, even when I get into Ubers here, sometimes people don't know what a podcast is or maybe someone has just started listening to the podcast. So I think it's about changing the, the um, or explaining the terminology in a way that people understand. That's the first challenge I would say, is just like access and accessibility and, and touch points with podcasts for a platform. The second bit would be, you know, building, building something that's for Africans, making sure that they understand what the value is behind that. Ultimately, there are no platforms that pay African creators right now. And so what we're looking to do is see African creators take up as much space as possible while ultimately getting paid for something they love to do and something that's fundamental to the DNA of the continent, which is storytelling and moving that into a digital space. When you talk about the creators and the potential challenges to get to a studio it may be due to not knowing how to edit the content or upload the content or familiarity with definitions like what's an rss feed or what's a hosting platform so i think it really depends on what the scope of that question is if it's towards the creator or the platform i also have a question to you guys in podcasting so at the moment how are you monitoring podcasts so if it's in are you directly monetizing podcasts like a musician who's on a streaming platform? Or are you using product placement or direct marketing within your podcast? So how are you going about monetizing podcasting? And what ideas would you have in regards to if you want to start a podcast? And then of the day, you have to be able to use all of what your passion project is unless you're doing it for fun. So how are you currently monitoring and what ideas would you have for someone who wants to monetize it? Okay. I think that was a little bit choppy on my end, but let me just repeat the question. It was, how are we currently monetizing? How could someone make money off of a podcast? Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So the first bit is we actually have technology embedded into the platform that allows us to insert DAI. DAI is dynamic ad insertion. So if you're listening to a podcast and it breaks up and it says, buy Nivea, Nivea is the best lotion around, or drink a Tusker, whatever that may be, that's called a dynamic ad insertion. And you can put it in a pre-roll, which means before the podcast, a mid-roll, which is during the podcast, or a post-roll. So those are inserted across the whole platform or across certain genre or with a specific podcast, depending on the advertiser. 
the next one, which I think is actually more fitting for a market that's still young in this um, new media, especially as advertisers get more comfortable with um, monetizing this media would be something called host read advertisements. And what that means is you go directly to a host of a podcast and the advertiser works directly with them. If someone like Afropods were to bring the advertiser to the podcast creator, then we would have a split that's in the favor of the creator over Afropods. Now, if it comes directly to the podcaster, then they're welcome to do whatever they'd like with it. And I think that happens quite frequently. So when you listen to a podcast and you hear someone's voice, the podcaster that you listen to endorse a product, that's called a host read advertisement. Additionally, what we see here across the continent, I want to say since the beginning of 20, 2023, it's been a lot more prevalent, especially here in Kenya, are live shows, right? So Joyride Podcast just had a live show. Sandwich Podcast just had a live show. The Mics Are Open just had a live show. Then in West Africa, uh, Sincerely Accra out of the Gold Coast Report had a show. There was a, a gentleman in Nigeria, Young God, had a live show podcast. There was one in South Africa at the beginning of this year. So podcasters are making money through live shows, through merch, through advertising, whether it's host red ads or dynamic ads. And Afropod specifically has the ability to do dynamic ad insertion or help support support podcasters through the connection of advertisers to podcasters for host red ads. I hope that answers the question. Do you do you offer um live uh, live streaming services for podcasts? Was it actually the first time I've ever heard of that. Well, I I've, I've heard of that before, but it's questionable if you would call it a podcast unless they have an RSS feed, right? I think uh, when we talk about audio on demand, there's a lot of gray area of what could be a podcast or what couldn't. But when it comes to live content, ultimately what podcasts allow you to do is listen to the audio content when you want it. So what if you're not in the car when mine is on in the morning, then you would have the ability to listen to it again and that would be a podcast. But if it's live, that may not count as a podcast. Then it's a radio, then it's a, it's a stream. Well, I, I, don't, I would be cautious as to how I define yeah. all of these things because you also have live podcast recordings, right? Like if you have a live event and yeah. they're doing a live podcast, then that is technically live but it can be listened to again. And if it's able to be distributed via RSS, then that's technically a podcast. Interesting. There's need for knowledge, guys. I am beaming with joy with all this information, DA, um, advertisement, insertions, and all that. So guys, um, one thing I want to mention is that AfriPods is giving one free lesson, introductory lesson to Podcasting 101. So um, comment, comment as much as you can. Tweet at PLP Africa and let us know or why you want to get started in podcasting and maybe you'll be taking that home because there's quite a bit of knowledge that um, needs to go around. And um, Molly, I'd like you to share with us, what do you think, what role do you think training and education has on people's adoption to podcasting and um, this new wave of listening to your stories? Sure, I mean, that's a heavy question. And I think it again goes back, when it comes to education and training, I think, we can look at it from a multitude of different ways, right? Like there are people, for instance, who learn about podcasting through YouTube. YouTube has incredible resources from education, like YouTube University is a thing, right? And you can learn how to create a podcast, what a podcast is, you can discover podcasts, you can share your podcast, all on that platform as an example. We've seen specifically here in Kenya, like we've spoken to uh, KIMC, we've gone to USIU, we've gone to campuses on the ground here who are either implementing podcasting programs, have students interested in podcasts, or have students already podcasting. So we see that happening already, and I think that there's um, education resources that are looking to help create space for young talent to create audio, digital audio content. You're seeing that shift of traditional media to digital media and how do people get in that space, which ultimately leads me to what I think is most valuable about this on the continent. You have to recognize that, and I I think I'd speak on behalf of the entire continent rather than just Kenya for scope. Most of the continent is not in a, uh, most of the continent has informal job day-to-day capacity 
capacity, right? So when you look at economies like any country, it's much, much smaller percentage of jobs with salaries compared to people who potentially are day laborers, whatever, which is huge in your young, which is of people on the continent monetize their creative ability and genius to make money whether it's supplemental income or primary income. So you're looking at a group of people who are fluent in digital, who are comfortable on social platforms, who have avatars uh, online and have the ability to take their own unique space, build a community, not a tr what traditional media would call an audience, yeah. but truly the need of people who are loyal to them and make money off of it. And that's ultimately what I think the entire creator economy is about, right? How do people make money off of what they create. And I think Africa has one of the largest opportunities to see the population do so just because not everyone is in a formal traditional job. People are looking to make money in multiple ways, education and training and, and access to that. You'll see a lot of people trying new things and I'm yeah. excited about it. A hundred percent. 100%. And in the same breath of training, maybe Sean, you can tell us more about Supersonic Academy and what you guys are trying to achieve with that. Um, the academy, the academy is 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 based off what I didn't get coming up. You know, I, I I got everything because my father was a musician and I was pressing record for him at a very small age. You know, um, while he was in the recording room, but. I realize that there is also a there is also a gap that that needs to be filled. Um, you know, um, the the gap. Africa, some of some of the talent that why Africa now. Um, there is a lot of talent, you know, as as Molly said, there's a lot of talent that is wanting to be somewhere but they don't know how mm. um and just the simple the simplest things are, are are the necessity for someone to do the most greatest things right um so our course is going the, the students won't have a choice on the subjects they choose right they're going to they're going to learn an in-depth field of everything Right in just 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 the the medium to shallow um, knowledge of it. So from film production, uh, not film production, film scoring, which can then tie itself into advertising, uh, making music for adverts. You know, because music for film is synced to picture, um, and that's what is going to help advertising. Now, advertising, the money. If if someone if someone wants to make music and make money from it quickly, advertising is the way. Yeah. Um, However, as I said, there is, there is, there is, there is a left and right to everything, right? Advert <clears throat> advertising is, is, um, is your creativity being put in a bracket, right? And that, that needs to be taught mm -hmm. to people because as much as it sounds like, like an easy thing, it's actually not. It's actually the most complex thing for you to be told to make a classical piece of music when your experience is, is, is Afro, Afro pop you know yeah. um and and things like there was a question which was asked which i don't know if uh, you'd like me to answer now but what i'm going to mm -hmm. say is basically leading to that mm -hmm. um kenya kenya south africa south africa has blown up nigeria has blown up tanzania in its own right has blown up internally with the music um music scene mm -hmm. i think the the level of local supporters that Tanzania has is incredible to their own music. It's actually really incredible, right? I'm a pian uh, they have their own I'm a piano sound, yeah. which doesn't leave in, uh, Tanzania a lot, but it's actually on the top 10 charts in, in Tanzania. Um, so Kenya is next. Kenya is next. And I was actually having um, dinner with, with um, the CEO of the Grammys came here the other day, right? And, and Mr. Harvey Jr. And the reason he came here is because he knows this, right? He knows that Kenya is next. Mm. Um, so as, 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 as a producer, right, and as an engineer, there, there are many things that my sound and my, my approach to making music has been changed by learning 
something that not is not production. Mm. For example, um, learning how to EQ a bass drum, right? Now, when I'm making a track, I'm going to think of that first before I actually choose the bass drum, right? I'm going to think of the EQ, the sound, the sonic um, field of it. Mm. And that enables me to think a lot more diversely than I have. Um, so the mission, the mission, the mission at Supersonic is to create cadets, right? To create cadets that are able to go into a studio like this um, and know their way around, because it can be a bit intense, yeah. you know, and know their way around, especially like a mixing desk and, you know, because even the way that you mix on a computer versus the way you mix on a mixing desk. So for example, this, this is a mixing desk with all these separate faders over here. And the way you mix on a computer is very, very different. Um, so it's basically just wanting, I'm wanting to give, to give um, the people who enroll an in-depth knowledge of everything because it will change the way that they make music. If, for example, they're not going to be a film scorer, they're going to do, um, you know, music production, then the fact that they're learning film scoring, for example, would make them score to the music video. Mm. right that they're they're working on um so really i think that the more knowledge you can get about the field you're in the more it separates you from the rest um yeah Ooh, okay it's very interesting one thing um you mentioned it in the beginning and i was just in south africa for advertising week and i was help, helping my channel on the and the topic was really about how Africa for so long has been consuming culture and importing yeah. aspects of culture. Whether that's Burna Boy Salsons or Garden, I'm a piano being everywhere, Black Panther being successful, Beyonce having an album, seeing Aperchella turn into this behemoth of an event. I, I think to echo and further, let me make sure you can hear me, to echo and further reinforce that this is happening now. I just think there's never been a more exciting time to either be on the continent, be from the continent, visit the continent, know someone who lives on the continent, listen to music or podcasts from yeah. the continent. And like, really, we have an opportunity and not just an opportunity, but a responsibility for people like in our position to make sure that those creators are taking up space and getting paid for it making sure that they're getting the same opportunities um, that they may get in the West or comparable ones here, but at least do our very best to get that visibility and, and scream about it. So I'm excited to hear that um, yeah. the President Grammys is here. I'm excited to hear that like, you know, Naisha has such a strong following here and Ten Tanzanian music is, is so strong where it is. Like the opportunity is truly limitless. And when we talk about that digital jump, you see creators like, also Majimbo, who was able to break the ceiling. You see people like Lupita Nyong'o here winning Oscars. And I think that like you can't undermine that this all comes down to what's fundamentally in you as a creator, whether that's you being a musician or a podcaster or a singer or an actor. And we have a real, real time right now to, to take advantage of that on the internet. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. I mean, if you look at, if you look at, if you look at someone like a, a, Thames. Thames was the first African female ever to win a Grammy, you know, and she, 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 she's been out making music for how long? I would think two years, right? Burner Boy, same thing, was out making music for two years before he won a Grammy. Um, and if you look at what's happening is that African music is being consumed so fast and so easily that it's making a mark into so much that even Beyonce now wants to use our culture or use the African culture for, for her album. There was some questionable things that Beyonce did, but I'll not get on that right now. But she, 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 she actually invited Africans to collaborate on, 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 her, on her album. And that, let alone for what it did for the artists, what it has done for her, you know, is, 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 widened the culture that Americans can uh, are starting to see or the West are starting to see. Um, I think 
even the fact that you know um we have have we have a lot of collaborators now collaborating in 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 african music and one thing that i want to say is that you know i think i think now i think one one thing that i would like i would like to change um in this in this industry is that there is a certain threshold that artists can reach within their own country right they, they, for example someone like or so people like saudi soul they've reached the threshold here they've done they can't do any more yeah. literally and that's not because of their talent that's because of what is available to them here as resources to to expand themselves right there's nothing more that they can do because that's what the music industry here allows for right um and that's one thing that i would like to change so what's happening is you're going to find people like ira star who is now living in uh, either america or england i can't remember i was not living but they're there a lot burner boy is in is in is in is in america and england as well you know and this is the way that that even thames right so this is the way that that artists now are pushing the envelope in terms of their own sound which is 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 a sad thing because essentially they cannot make it further unless they go to the west you know so that's also something that i would like to change it. yeah provide and making guys so important you know and yeah. it doesn't um, all, all so unfortunate you stems sean because stems was producing for herself for a very long time yeah. um yes. she was doing her own production and using So you know, I'd like to find out what technologies of sonic using and adapting to um to adapt to this new sound even this new way of doing music. Well, I think I, I think we are having to we are having to throw everything thought out the window about what makes a great studio great, right? Mm, yeah. To me what I thought makes a great studio great was an was an analog mixer um things like great speakers things like that but as yeah as much as that creates a sonic separation between you know the you 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 and you and the rest of the 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 industry it's also limiting because a lot of great music has been made in a hotel room you know and i think the knowledge the knowledge of of knowing how a studio operates in 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 the analog domain and the analog world is useful to a certain extent but i think everything now is revolutionizing towards music technology inside a computer you know so learning 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 how to um learning how to make your own sounds without necessarily using an analog um con- console to do that you know how am i going to get an analog sound without using an analog desk right how am i going to how am i going to emulate these things that are in a great studio on a laptop um and i think for me that's also something that we are going to try and do in the academy you know how uh, teaching people how how reverbs work in order that so that they can learn the knowledge to make their own reverb through like you know the non conventional way if you look at what's happening in 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 west africa right to me the most the most noticeable thing about nigerian afrobeat is the snare right is the snare sound it punches through you it makes your waist move it just hits you in places that you know no other african music hits you that snare sound when it knocks it knocks and a good example of this would be like a uh, bad samaritan from arista the way that it's mixed it's so simple it's such a simple track there's about four to five elements in the track right um and it's mixed in in such a way that nothing is busy everything stands out but there is a level of there's a level of uh, levels <laughs> which each instrument has in itself you know and to me to me i don't i don't i, I know the engineer who mixed it and i know that they they unless it was mastered on a mixing desk but i know a lot of nigerian producers actually mix inside the box you know so what they do and i think that's a great thing you know and that's what africa is great at it's great at creating it's great at create 
constructing their own niche without necessarily like being the inventor of their own things you know yeah. inventing like uh, you know like like no one no one no one necessarily taught people how to you know play play the the guitar is a western invention mm. right and they want people here were not taught in the western way how to play guitar neither did the people in the western world think that Afri that guitar is going to be played the way that africans played you know they created their own um their own vibe and their own sound you know mm -hmm. and even today if you listen to 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 for example um who am i going to say um someone like uh, Burna Boy, last last that was a sample that was used from um I can't remember which track but a very famous western track right and chopsticks Bernie Braxton. <laughs> yeah exactly thank you <laughs> right. so chopsticks who is the producer on it uh, actually worked with him he's actually a really really great guy um his approach to making music is very unorthodox yeah. right but it works so well he's invented his own thing he's not following the rules of what the western world does right mm. and that's why necessarily you're going to have people who are engineers just being engineers people who are producers because they're following a certain stream of which they can't break out of yeah. or they shouldn't break out of mm. you know but I think here we're breaking the rules and creating our own sound. We're we're creating chaos, you know, and 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 chaos that is that is that is being heard and being appreciated, yeah. you know. And when I say chaos, I mean I don't mean it in the in the in the sense of like chaotic music. I mean like breaking the rules. People are like, whoa, I never knew that a that that um, a snare can sound like that, you know. Like so, you never you never know that a snare would would be mixed that loud in a track, right? But they mm. did it. They broke the rules. They were like, you know what? We're going to turn this up, and I don't, I don't care what's going to happen. I'm going to turn this up, and it's non-conventional, and it worked. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So excited to see the future of how we use technology to go back to our roots. You know, I think this is our solution. Yeah. Um, Re-establishing a new way of sharing our voice, be it through story, podcasting, um, African snares and going back to Kayambas. It's a new way of um, exploring music and sound. And I think as we wrap up, um, the conversation has been so amazing. We lost track of time. Um, I'd like to pose a question to all of you and I'm starting with you, Ian. What do you think is the future of music and streaming platforms and what role does technology play in adapting to that future a quick 30 seconds answer would do <laughs> you, you got this I believe in you. you're muted sir. yeah i would say the music industry is going to evolve very differently in very different markets which has been the norm traditionally but with the introduction of things like ai and blockchain that is starting to go away very fast because right now anyone in the world has access to chat gpt so long as you have access to a browser yeah. so if yeah and and the more ai gets advanced the faster it advances basically so the next leap from where it is right now to the next one is it's going to take way shorter than it did from the previous one to the current one so the more technology evolves, the more centralized the global marketplace for entertainment essentially becomes, and not just music. Yeah. So you find music drives so many things. So everyone at some point listens to music. It's the single most consumed uh, service or product yeah. that's non-tangible. So everyone consumes music and it drives so many things. If you look at fashion, uh, people back in, in let's say in kenya who are living in the rural areas they know about louis vuitton gucci supreme and the likes not from googling these brands it's usually from the music videos they watch so it influences so many things in culture from fashion to products you consume to all these different things and at some point yeah when it becomes centralized then it starts to drive everything so i think the future of music is a centralized global platform for entertainment, not just music. I love it. I love it. Molly, what's, where does the future of podcasting lie in storytelling? Well, I think we have to remember we are digital people now living in a digital world, right? And I think specifically on the continent, we're going to see growth of like mother tongue podcasts, uh, vernacular podcasts. I think that because Africa as a continent is so comfortable 
auditory forms of content, specifically because radio is so powerful, because music is so powerful, I think that we are going to have an opportunity to potentially become the largest podcasting market in the world. I just don't think it's going to look the way it does in the West. And I think that we have an opportunity to really define what audio on demand means as we capture the digital storytelling opportunity. I love it. I love it. And Sean, where does the future lie in music production? Um, my future or the future? The future, I'm a little bit of your the future. future. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I see, I see, I see African music being the basis of a lot of rules that are going to be rewritten in the music industry through AI. Like for me right now, an AI generated website can create a trap kind of beat because trap is very formulaic, right? Oh. Um, I, it cannot create an Afrobeat track. There's no way because that that, that that's something that there is no formula to. Mm. It is a feeling, you yeah. know. So I I see I see a lot of I see African dictating the way that the rules of music are being written, right? Um, not only that, I see Africa creating their own, creating our own our own our own platforms that we rely on, you know. Um, and that is happening at the moment, you know. I see Africa creating a lot of movements that that are going to be out, outlasting for generations, you know. Um, and when I say this, I mean someone like someone like Felakuti lives lives on in Bernaboy, you know. Um, and I see a lot of that happening more and more and more. So I'm excited for the future, and I also I also see a lot more African tech. Um, developers creating you know african technology right i want to see an african mixing desk made in africa yeah. you know i want to see i want to see software developers making making vst instruments you know that the west can't make because they don't know how to create that sound um that's what i that's what i, I see i love it I love it. You guys were phenomenal. Thank you so much for shedding so much light on this new future, such an integral part of our culture and our society, stories and music. So thank you so much for your time. And as I mentioned earlier, Powerland is Vibe Central, literally. We overdo and do the most. So um, I need maybe a two more minutes of your time to announce our winners. I will request my panelists to play a little bit with their filters. Um, there's a small baby face with some um, with glitters, and I'll put on the music for our winners' announcements. So feel free to have your favorite filter on. Play as well. Whoa, guys. that is crazy! I've never used this before. Get That's your mad. Don't <laughs> <What>? <laughs> 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 um, I don't usually do these, so let's see. Oh, there we go. There we go. I like that. Multiple faces. I love it. Okay. Um, I think I'll settle with that one for now. So we have places for guys who engage the most. Um, shared, <laughs> shared across of getting into music and podcasting and our amazing hosts um, want to journey with you. And so, are <laughs> need for our winner? And now, in three, two, one. We're done, man. Starting next week, probably soon. So, thank you for engaging with us. Um, and as for the podcast, uh, Molly, thank you so much for offering the free lesson on Podcasting 101. We have Haman Ogula. Congratulations, Haman. Woo! <laughs> high five, high five. Um, I present for myself and um, Ian from. So, 
thank you so much for your time, Sean, Molly, and Ian. It's such an amazing conversation, and we can't wait for you to join our community and grow with us as well. Thank nice you, guys. you guys. Thank you so much. Have a good weekend, everyone. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. How -bye. are you and thanks guys for joining until next time join us follow our community follow our social media pages and let us know um what future episodes and what future conversations you want us to get into bye bye until next time